before we lay out our patterns on our fabric, we have a few things to consider. Please be aware that the width of the fabric and the print of the fabric will have a lot to do with the fabric consumption. The fabric may have a width of 36 inches or 90 centimeters, which is called a single width fabric or a fabric may have a width of 45 inches or 115 centimeters or a width of 60 inches or 150 centimeters. Both of these fabrics are called double width fabrics. Okay, before we start, on the direction of the threads of the fabric, I would just like to point out that the fabric has a one directional print. As you can see, all this circular, almost oval design of the fabric, I guess simulates the feather of a peacock. So they're all facing this way. Now, with regards to the threads of the fabric, the thread running vertically is called the lengthwise grain or warp, while the thread running horizontally is called the crosswise grain or weft. The selvage is the finished part of the fabric which runs along the lengthwise grain. As you can see, it's running along the lengthwise grain of the fabric. And, and the crosswise grain runs horizontally from salvage to salvage. As you can see, both sides of the fabric have a finished edge which we call salvage, this part. Uh, the threads here are tightly woven so that unraveling will not occur on the edge of the fabric. Usually, the fabric is folded with the ends of the fold having the salvages meeting together. We highly suggest that the patterns are laid out on the fabric along the direction of the lengthwise grain because garments generally fall better when cut on the lengthwise grain. But truly, this is not the best way to place this skirt pattern because we have to consider the print of the fabric. Actually, when buying a fabric, it's best to really analyze everything about it. Uh, more importantly, the print. When I say on grain, most often I am referring to the lengthwise grain. When buying this kind of print, I guess you have already an idea how to lay out your pattern. As you can see, this is the fold of the fabric, which runs on the lengthwise grain. And remember that I laid out my pattern this way. Actually, it is quite wrong because I did not consider the print of the fabric. Now, if you see this print, this print is quite different from this print on the other side of the fabric and also the center where the fold is. So if I were to lay out my pattern, I will have to choose this part. This part will be the center of the skirt pattern. So I will have to lay it out this way. Upon analyzing the print of the fabric, I wouldn't want this main uh, attraction, I guess, of the print somewhere here on the groin area. 
So if ever, I will lay out my fabric this way where this is more or less on the upper and lower hip areas or more specifically the stomach area. And somewhere here on the middle of the upper leg area. So this will be folded this way. Okay. The only time we lay our patterns on the crosswise grain is when we want to see or use the border print, like what we see on this fabric. As you can see, the border print, which has stripe lines, run along the lengthwise grain or vertically as it is running along the selvage of the fabric. And this border is just on one side of the fabric, as you can see. So we will have to fold this if we want to get the border print or include the border print in our pattern. Since we want the border print, we will have to refold our fabric this way, which means that we will be laying out our skirt patterns on the crosswise grain. This is fine as the skirt is just a straight skirt with an A-line silhouette. If the skirt style is an all-around pleated skirt, the pleats will not hold as it is going against the lengthwise grain of the fabric. As you can see, these are the selvages. The stripes of the fabric are off uneven measurements and we want the border print to run along the hem of our skirt. Upon analyzing, we can see that the front and back skirt patterns have a hemline easing of one half of an inch or 1.3 centimeters on the center of the patterns here and gradually curves on the real length of the pattern where the side seam is. So our hemline is actually slightly curved. Before we lay out our patterns, we have to be slow on the placement of our patterns. We have to really make sure where we want the end of the hemline to fall on this stripe part of our fabric. So we will choose to lay out the center front hem line on the thickest stripe, which is color red. With this choice, I feel that the edge of our hem line will at least be showing a good portion of the red stripe. Can you picture how the skirt will eventually look if we lay it out here? As you can see, this bottom side of the hem line is on the green thin stripe and since the hem line is curved we're cutting the stripes unevenly on the end of our side seam of our skirt the stripe will end on the color gray so you see the skirt is going this way but if we cut on the bigger stripe at least from here a portion of the red stripe or 3 8 of an inch which is equivalent to one centimeter will show so we will lay out our skirt pattern this way we're laying out the center part on the edge of the red line and this one should be on grain which means it should be straight and you can see that here you have a remaining 3 8 of an inch or 1 centimeter red stripe. Again, we will lay 
our back pattern this way. It should also be on grain. How do we know that it's on grain? We can actually measure the distance from the fold to the edge of the zipper allowance. It should have an equal distance so that the back skirt pattern is laid on grain. So now, we consider that uh, the side seam will need a 1 inch or 2.5 centimeter sewing allowance and the back skirt will need a 1 fourth of an inch or 0.6 of a centimeter to finish the edge of the zipper allowance. As you can see, the center part of the pattern will have the same red stripe visible the same uh, measurement and on the side seam it will also have the same measurement that will be visible which means when these side seams are sewn together the lines will be aligned making the garment have a professional look or finish now for the front and back bodies pattern and the patterns for the facings we can lay out our patterns on the lengthwise grain. As you can see, the stripes are running along the selvage. So this is the selvage of our fabric. And we can lay out our front bodies and back bodies along the lengthwise grain and also the facings. Looking at this fabric, you may just assume that it is non-directional. But if you consider where all this colored and dotted pink petals are facing, you will realize that it has some kind of direction. So you will have to rearrange your patterns so that the print of the fabric will be on one direction only. Using these two illustrations, you will see what I mean, or the importance of really analyzing whether the print is one directional or non-directional. See if you do not identify this fabric as one directional after cutting and sewing together the fabric pieces, your garment will look like this. Comparing it to this illustration where the fabric was identified as one directional, this blouse looks busy because the dotted, let's say this is the dotted, the dark points of the petals are facing in different directions as you can see while here on this illustration the dark petals are just facing in one direction all this way so this blouse looks busy while this blouse is easy on the eyes